All right, this is my ITPC certificate. Let me read this for you really fast. Certification. This is to certify that David has successfully passed the Fundamental Information Technology Engineers Examination of the Philippine National IT Standards Philness Foundation, Inc. Certified Information Technology Professional. And this brings me to the topic I want to talk about today, which is visas. And yes, if you've been following me for a while, you also might notice that I already did this kind of video in the past here. But since the old one was pretty crappy and did not really go explain it the way I wanted it to be, I just decided to do it again, but this time a lot better. So Japan. My relationship with Japan is actually not as good as many people think it is. In fact, I tried to move to Japan many times in the past, over many years, and every single time when I applied for a working visa, every single time it got rejected with the reason that I don't have a university degree. I tried everything in my power, absolutely everything I could. I even sent an official formal letter to the Minister of Justice to appeal my case with the hope that maybe there's an exception they can do, maybe I can get my visa, maybe I can finally move to Japan because I have the qualification for it. But every single time I asked, it got rejected. At one point during my application, I even went to the immigration office here in Shinagawa to talk to one of the officers and what he said is something that I from that moment could not forget. He said, even though they completely understand that I have all the necessary qualifications and skills to work in Japan for a Japanese company, including Japanese language, they cannot give me my visa because I don't have a degree. Sorry. Getting a visa in Japan is actually not that difficult as long as you have all of the requirements. But one of these requirements is a university degree. And the only way, the only other way to skip this requirement if you don't have a university degree is if you have 10 years of work experience in the field that you're applying in. 10 years, a one and a zero. Now, the school system in Germany is a little bit different. I have something called a vocational degree, which basically means that for three years, I went to a very specialized IT school and at the same time I went to work for a company. The idea behind this is that when you learn something in school, you take that knowledge and you bring it to the office and you can apply it and you learn in that way. By itself, the certificate is actually pretty good. In Germany, you can pretty much substitute a university degree with this, but here's the problem. You can only do that in Germany and nowhere else. In Japan, this is like the same as if I didn't have a certificate to begin with. And now if I wanted to go to university here and like do my degree here so I can work in Japan later on, I cannot do that either because the three years of vocational school that I did in Germany just don't exist. So as I said, I tried everything I could. I researched every possibility of me getting a visa because I did not want to go back to Germany to do my university degree. And I definitely did not want to work 10 years before moving to Japan. And when I was talking to one of the companies, to one of the immigration agents of that company, he talked to me about ITPC. And that is basically what you can see here in the top right corner. So ITPC means Information Technology Professional Examination Council. And it's an Asian-wide council currently consisting of eight countries. Some of them are Philippines, Japan, Thailand, Vietnam, Myanmar, and lately even China and Korea showed interest. So down the line, it will just get bigger in the future. Now, all countries that are part of this council agreed on holding the exact same examination at the exact same time on the exact same day, twice a year. In this exam, you can pick out of three different categories, Applied Engineer, Fundamental Engineer, and IT Passport, where the Applied Engineer is the most difficult one and the IT Passport the most easy one. Now, why the hell would you care about some random Asian council? And what about the certificate that I showed in the beginning? What is it good for? How do you get it? Here is the really cool thing about this. If you happen to pass the Applied Engineer or the Fundamental Engineer exam and you hold this certificate in your hands, it officially means that you can now work in all countries that are part of this council as an engineer without having to have a university degree. Let me repeat this one more time. Having this certificate means that you can officially work in Japan as an engineer without a university degree. And this is great because this is exactly what I've been looking for the entire time. So how does this exam look like? I'm going to concentrate on the FE exam here because that is the one that I actually have. And here's how it works. The entire exam takes five hours. It's two and a half hours in the morning and two and a half hours in the afternoon. I think you have a one hour break in the middle where you can just eat something, drink something, but then you have to go back and do the rest of the exam. During these five hours, you have to answer a ton of questions, basically covering everything computer science related that you would usually learn in university. But since you take this exam, chances are that you did not go to university and did not learn that yet. So you have to self-study. For me personally, I bought official books from the website and booked a flight to the Philippines to Manila where I took the test. I wanted to go to Manila anyway, so it was a really good deal to just go to Manila and do this exam at the same time. So it's like two things with one strike. 
And hey, it turns out I actually passed. It took around two months for me to get this paper in my hands. And once I had it and I submitted it to the immigration here in Japan, it took two weeks only to issue my visa. Two weeks. So what I want to say is this. If you're an engineer and you're in a similar situation like I was before, you maybe want to move to Japan or another Asian country and you don't have a university degree, don't give up. There's always something you can do. Brush up your computer science knowledge, maybe download the previous exams and just see how it is. If it's too difficult, just study a little bit more. If it's easy, what are you waiting for? Take the test and just try it. What can you lose? If you pass, it can be something that actually changes your life. And if you don't pass, you can just try in six months again. Six months compared to 10 years of work experience is a really big difference. In any way, I really hope this video helps some of you out there. When I had these big problems, I wished someone made a video like this just for me to know that this option is out there. If this video helped you and you're planning to take this exam, or maybe you took the exam, or maybe you have different experience with it, just let me know here on YouTube or on Twitter. I think it's very interesting to hear different experience, different stories, different perspectives on this problem, and maybe we can like all help each other or something like that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hopefully see you in the next video. Bye-bye.